my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have a really amazing video to share with you today. My guests, Shirley and Steve Rees, are here to talk to you about healing frequencies. This is especially important for people who are going through trauma, you're going through the impact of what it, your life is going to be like now that you realize that, number one, you're with a narcissist, or number two, you have to face all of the complications that go along with family court and a narcissist. And we we need to take care of ourselves because we can only make decisions that are on the level of ourselves, right? And so if we're not in a good place, we're not going to be making healthy decisions, healthy choices, and really be thinking long term. Not just to mention what we're doing right now, but the ability for us to uh, see into the future and have our imaginations uh, partnered with the perfect will of God for our lives is so important, especially now. So without further ado, I will bring on Steve and Shirley. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, it's our pleasure to be with you. Definitely. Thank you, thank, thank you for having us. Yeah. I just want to share with my audience that we've actually known each other for quite a while. I met you back, I think, 2018 at uh, at a conference that you guys were doing in Appleton, Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah Chuck, yes. we were there with Kel, yeah. Yeah, right. you were there with Kel Bales. And, uh, and I knew just from that meeting, I, I think I bought some of your tabernacle frequency books and some other books and it just was the revelation in there was life-changing for me at the time and then this past year especially for me i've been, gone back and reread those books because there's so much in frequencies and the healing that they bring and the revelation that you guys carried not just with the sounds but even with the uh, with the clothing with, with talking about how you know you shouldn't mix your your kind of clothes that you wear and so forth oh it just is so good and I'm so glad that you guys are here to share that knowledge with my audience today well we're we're glad to share with what uh, what we can <laughs> so, <laughs> what we understand you know that it's um it's interesting because as you start to delve into this area of, of frequencies um, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of different views, I should, I should say. And one of the things I like to say right up front, um, because a lot of, there's a lot of um, practitioners that just go after the frequency and don't give God credit for being smart enough to have designed the frequency to be for our benefit. And um, I like to say I draw a line at, um, we're either going to glorify the created, what was created, or we're going to glorify the creator and we're and my my whole life is to be to glorify the creator and i want to understand as best as i can and, and really pursue what is he, what tools has he given us and i believe the frequencies i believe he created with frequency so we can get into that um possibly but um anyway I, he it's kind of like the frequency he's it was his way of putting his his signature on his creation so maybe maybe that's a good way to start <laughs> absolutely i actually really love that i i i watched your interview that you did with dr ben dr ben was just on my channel as well and um and you talked about how you actually think that the world was created from 528 hertz is that correct yes i yeah, do i mean I love and singing and I just love that because you know of course Zephaniah comes to my mind of that he's he's singing songs of deliverance over you and it's a constant it's all the time right yeah. and so I just yeah I love that do you want to go into that well just to just simply uh, when we go back to that creation account in Genesis um, you know it's and God said let there be light well interestingly enough um, I first of all think he sang it and I think he sang it in 528 frequency because when you the work that I've done with the Hebrew alphabet and the Psalms of David and each Hebrew letter having a musical note that is associated with it what we find is that the name of God Yod Hey Vav Hey gives us that 528 Hertz C chord <laughs> and yeah. And so, in fact, one of my CDs is called The Frequency of Light, which is based totally on that 528 frequency. Um, because I, I, and there's, you know, we can maybe get into the tabernacle and some of those things about how there's a whole nother tie in, how light itself 
ties in with the 528 frequency as well. So, but um, just to say that our Heavenly Father, I think, as he, first of all, as he brings forth light, I think he's singing it forth. And I think he's singing it in a very specific frequency that is tied with his name, which is kind of his way of signing his creation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is so powerful. And that really resonates with me because he's so loving. He would put love into every single, his signature, you know, that you're you're mentioning, you know, another synonym for God is love. And yeah. so to me, having that input into every single thing that he created, that just lines up so much with his character and who I know him to be. So I love that you were able to, to bring that out. But can you tell my audience a little bit, if they're not familiar with, with you and your work, a little bit about how you got on the journey of um, discovering how to play the Psalms in specific notes and keys and, and all of that? <laughs> well, <laughs> that, yeah. Well, Shirley and I, um, we uh, went to Israel in 2006. And um, before that, uh, and as um, when we were talking before you started recording, you had talked about um, how the referring to the First Samuel chapter sixteen when David played the harp for King Saul, and in as he played, it it says that a troubling spirit came over King Saul, and they one of the uh, chamberlains asked, "Hey, let's go get David. He can come and play the harp." and and it says as David played, that troubling spirit left. And um, so before 2006, as, as a registered nurse doing hemodialysis, uh, which is a fairly long treatment, I would bring my little harp in and, and play while we were going through the treatment. And I started seeing physiological effects very profound in my patients. And that caused me to ask the question, well, David's Psalms, if David was playing music and it made the something change mentally and physiologically um, and spiritually, what would, what would, you know, because all of the Psalms, isn't that a songbook? And if it's a songbook, there must be music associated with it. And so that got me started. So when we went to Israel, um, Shirley and I, uh, we were hitting up <laughs> rabbis and archaeologists and um, all kinds of people. You know, has anybody found some sheet music in an archaeological dig? Yeah. <laughs> Good <laughs> luck. <laughs> which, which the obvious answer was no. Um, but there was a there's a harp maker in uh, Mika Harari in uh, Jerusalem. And I got to talk with him, and he makes a little 22-string harp. He chose 22 strings because there's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. And he carved a, a Hebrew letter at the base of each string. And so I, I asked him, I said, well, how did you decide which note went to which letter? And he said, well, I just started at the bottom and went to the top. But it gave me the idea that maybe there was a linear relationship between if we if we went to the center of the Hebrew alphabet and brought that to the center of the uh, musical scale and then went up and down from there, maybe we would have some kind of a correlation. So that's where we started. Later on, I f found a book, um, Healing Codes for the Biological Apocalypse, <laughs> big name, uh, written by Dr. Um, Horowitz, um, Leonard Horowitz, and Joseph Polio. And there's a chapter in there that Joseph says he got a download from the Holy Spirit in which it showed him how to, to um, first of all, go to Numbers chapter 7 and find the, the notes or the frequencies, frequencies or notes, and then go to Psalm 119 and, and find the relationship between which note goes to which letter by using the same numerical formula. And so I started working with that and that's that's mind blowing. I as I share that people go like, "Huh, what are you talking about?" <laughs> but but it it's a fairly complex um, 
formula, but it, it's very accurate. And that's really what I work with now in bringing the, so each, each letter is a note. And when you put the, all of the letters of a Hebrew word together, you end up with a chord. And then you go from word to word to word and you have chord progression, which is really how music works. That's how all music has its chord progressions written above, you know, in your, your, your um, guitar chords written above the words, you know, so that you can play the chords along with the, with the tune. And essentially that's how music works. And so that's really what I work with at this point. Yeah, I, I mean, that's amazing. And practically speaking, once you, I mean, it's incredible that you even got that revelation on how the Psalms were songs and how to even play them, you know, in a way that would sound beautiful, but it would actually have tremendous impact on people's physical bodies as well. Do you want to share a little bit about what you were doing whenever you were a nurse, whenever you were actively working as a nurse, and some of the transformations that you saw in your client's blood, for example? Um, well, do you want to tell them that one story? That um, the letter we got from the... Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you have to share about your mom. Oh, yeah, right. That too, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have time for all the stories, so we want to hear them all for sure. Remember, Shirley's the storyteller. We yeah, uh, yeah. we started this whole journey out as harp and story. I played yes. the harp as the story. So. And I actually would like to say, you have amazing books for children. Um, yeah. And they're wonderfully illustrated and and just that's a whole other gifting that you guys have as well. So we'll definitely include links to that in the description of this video so that so that my audience can go check out everything that you you offer. Thank you. Yeah. Of course. The story Steve was referring to was uh, we had one harp CD out at the time and it was called Healing Harp. And in this letter that we received in the mail from a lady we had never met, had, had no idea who she was. And she started out by saying, you don't know who I am, but uh, someone shared a copy of this CD of yours with me and here's $20 to pay for it. And, um, and then she went on to tell the story. And she said her husband had had a, a massive life ending heart attack. And they got him to the hospital and. Um, I, I, you'd probably say life threatening because he, he was still alive, but very serious. Okay, life threatening. <laughs> yeah. um, they got him up to the cardiac care unit and hooked him up to all the equipment and the doctor came in and told her, he said, I want you to prepare yourself because with the, the heart attack, the massiveness of destruction that was done to his heart during this attack, I, I don't think he's going to make it through the night. And, um, you know, to hear that, uh, that that's devastating in itself. But um, what she did she went to the nurses and she said, would you mind if I, if I um, put some earphones on my husband and, and played, you know, music for him through the night? And they said, yeah, you can do that as long as, you know, it doesn't bother anyone. So she, um, <clears throat> she put Steve's Healing Harp CD on, on loop. So all through the night it kept playing and when the doctor came in in the morning he picked up the chart looked at the chart looked at his patient looked at all the machines to make sure they were still working then he turned to the nurse and he said what have you done <laughs> and they said nothing more than what you ordered and he said well this isn't the same man that came in last night and uh, she said in the letter that three days later he was discharged from the hospital healthy and whole and went on to um you know live and enjoy life the both of them together and it was just an astounding story and as we read it it was just one of those stories that bring tears to your eyes because you have no idea yeah, yeah. You know, one of the one of the things that this story and, you know, talking with you guys before, prior to, we, to when we started recording is thinking about, um, you know, your body being 
70% water, right? And actually years ago, I remember I, 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 uh, I had just come back from Afghanistan and I was having bad headaches and I didn't I didn't know what was going on there and I went to a doctor who who actually told me that you know the moon can affect that all kinds right. of things could and I had no I had never heard this I was like what kind of doctor are you <laughs> you know and and he said I was like I you know I was like I just don't know that that's what's going on he said um, if the moon can affect the oceans why do you think it can't affect you and that was really when I started recognizing, okay, water is super important in our bodies. And this past year, I started learning more about our fascia. And, and this is the tissue, you know, between your skin and your muscles. Right. And how important this is, because that's nearly 100% water. And right. so even your internal organs and stuff could be functioning normal, but if there's no way for that to, to come through your, your bones, your muscles, and then your skin, your body can still be in a lot of dysfunction, a lot, not disharmony. And so uh, I would love if you could talk about a little bit about, you know, bringing those waters into, into harmony. And I I just love how every kind of thing ties together, like the way that creation happened. Even I think about Jesus speaking to the waves, like be still. He was, I believe he was speaking on a frequency that he already had internally, right? That, And he was speaking on that frequency that he wanted those waters to to mimic, to, to come into congruence with. Yeah, I, I think so. And the, you know, the interesting thing is, you know, if you think about it, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Well, what, what is he saying? You know, he's, mm. he's definitely identified, you know, John 1, 1, he said, in the beginning was the word. So he's called the word as well. And the word was with God and the word was, and all things are created by him and nothing was made without him, you know? So, so, and then that takes us directly to Genesis 1, 1, you know? So, um, so here we have him calling himself the light, referring himself back to the beginning and you know there, it's just so tied in you know interestingly enough even when you go to the rainbow the word the hebrew word for rainbow ends up being the 528 frequency as well wow. and um and the whole description you know the whole how shirley and i got on the um the tabernacle you were referring to the tabernacle um journey through the tabernacle book that shirley wrote um one morning Surely, she said, you know that um, those those frequencies that you work with, you got out of the Numbers chapter 7. She said, um, have you noticed that there's six frequencies and there's also six pieces of tabernacle furniture? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, yeah, I hadn't put those two together. That's kind of, yeah, that's kind of interesting. So about 15 minutes later. <laughs> I don't think it was that long. Well, but, yeah. Maybe shorter. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, she said, you know that thing you do with the Psalms where you get the chord progression? You say, what would happen if you took the description of the um, each of the pieces of furniture? You know, like Exodus 27 talks about the brazen altar. What would happen if you um, did the chord progressions out of that? And I said, well, you know, let me get started. <laughs> so, so a very interesting thing took place in that as I did each piece of furniture, normally when I do a Psalm, there's a certain number of, of G chords, certain number of C, certain number of A, you know, it's kind of equally distributed. Well, not equally, but a certain ratio that shows up with each of the Psalms. But in the case of the pieces of furniture, each piece of furniture had a different emphasis on a different chord. And when I took those chords back to the frequency that represents that note, each, it, what, a really amazing thing was that at the first thing you come to, the uh, brazen altar where the sacrifice is made, that's the lowest frequency. And then when you come to the next piece of furniture, the labor, it's the next highest frequency. And then the menorah is actually ends up being, it's the light and it's 528 frequency. <laughs> Very interesting. And then you come to the table of showbread, it's the 639, the um, golden altar for incense, the 741, and then the uh, final inside the Holy of Holies where the, the, uh, the mercy seat and the Shekinah presence, that's the highest frequency, the 852. So, so that's where Shirley wrote that book where there's a process of coming through the tabernacle where we 
we don't have a tabernacle anymore, but what Paul says, don't you know yeah. we are the tabernacle? Yeah. Yeah. So so that that book that that she wrote was taking us to each of those stations to to engage in <clears throat> in the process that was going to bring us into the highest frequency, which is the presence of our Heavenly Father. So so that's just and and all of those things play out in the natural world as well. Mm -hmm. It's all related. Yeah, exactly. And and it, yeah, that book was was so profound to me as well, yeah. where every single thing is so intentional. You know, it kind of just makes you stand back in in true awe of how marvelous marvel marvelously we are all created and everything was created, right? Nothing was an accident. Everything right. was specific, very intentional and down to the down to the things that we cannot see. You you talked about the the frequency of light. And, uh, and and Jesus saying, I am the light of the world. And the very first thing that was ever created was light, right? right. But, the, but the moon and the stars, none, none of the things were that made natural light were made until days later. And you so have, you don't have life if you don't have light. <laughs> right. But the things that produce light that we see didn't come until the day until day four. And yeah. right. the first right. thing was light. And I always thought that's so interesting. And I read a book, uh, it's called The Quantum Glory. And it's about how th this author believes that what was first ever made was the quantum realm light. Yeah. And quantum physics, <laughs> quantum entanglement is, is a fascinating field. <laughs> fascinating. Well, Shirley, Shirley's written a book <laughs> called uh, God's Power Lines in which she yes. really f fleshes out that um, that whole relationship yeah yeah everything we see in the electricity is what we see in the spiritual realm so, yeah yeah uh, that book was is actually one of the books that i i'm working through right now in my own self and like i said the the frequency of even your clothes because in in leviticus there's a bunch of you know pretty strange and very strict rules that don't really make sense unless you go down to the 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 quantum level on some of this stuff because you don't right. understand that the frequency of your clothes will will cancel each other out and actually not allow you to, to the electricity to pass through your body and for right. you to be a conduit it will it will actually cause damage to you um so i just I, that book is so amazing I, I, again the it's in the description um in this video and what i love also about the way that you guys write is that these aren't long books they're they're condensed to the point of giving you all the knowledge that you would absolutely need to understand what's going on, but not enough to, con it's by no means confusing. It's it's very, uh, and it also brings you so close to your creator because when you see how, again, intricate and uh, it, intentional he was when he made us, it, it, it's just mind blowing, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. is, yeah. You know, it's, in, um, what, what's really fascinating too is um, we're starting to get um, scientific studies <laughs> yeah um, that are actually even more confirming I, you know, going back to the story Shirley told of this uh, fellow that uh, went home that was supposed to die um, there's a, a study that was done down in uh, El Paso Car cardiac hospital where they took um, people and put them on the treadmill and they, they do a treadmill test where they keep increasing the angle of the um, slope and it gets harder and harder and they get you to a point where your heart rate reaches a point where they shut it off because that's as much as it's it's a it's a stress tolerance test is what they call it and um, so they get you to that point of tolerance where you're that's as far as you you go so then so they did the first one without in any music. And then they would let them go rest for a few days and then they would bring them back and they would put um, headphones on and let them listen to music while they were doing this test. And across the board, they were achieving 25% more cardiac output than without the music. So if you think about this gentleman that was in the hospital uh, with a severe heart attack that 
basically your cardiac output is what measures whether you live or die. Um, with the music, he ended up with 25% more cardiac output. Nice. And that's enough to make the difference between life and death. And mm. um, so, so you know, and then there's other studies that are have giving sim similar results. So, it's just uh, we there's something that our heavenly Father wants us to understand about this these frequencies. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. You know, the when when because when we can uh, combine our faith and our understanding we can truly start making changes that are replicatable, right? So it's not just like by accident that I stumble into something. I can now intentionally do this for myself and also pass that knowledge on to other people as well so that they can have the same the same outcome that, that I experienced. Yeah. So I, I'm definitely in agreement with you on that. What would you say to people who are, um, who are in my audience um, is primarily people who have just recognized that they are dealing with a narcissist or maybe they recognize that they're dealing with a narcissist but they're not really quite sure on how to handle that again there's a lot of confusion a lot of overwhelm a lot of life-changing events are happening so what would you say to to them about the power that is contained in in you in the frequencies that that you play on the harp no, not you. You, that. <laughs> you start that one. I'll, well, there's anything to fill in. Well, just you know, going back to the story you were relating before we started recording about the woman that was clearly her mind was very much um, cleared up with the influence of the music, um, and I think you know there's other studies that are showing how even our neurotransmitters are stimulated with the music, and and so. Um, I have people write me all the time on my YouTube channel. Um, you know, one guy said, I, when I started listening to your music, I was able to, he said, I've been trying to get off drugs for years and not succeeding, but I started listening to your music and now I'm clean. Wow. Um, and so I can only attribute it, you know, I can only attribute that to that um, physiologically, you know, I'm, I'm a registered nurse, so I'm trained scientifically to think, oh, you know, and, and I always have to be careful to not negate the spiritual influence as well. Um, but at the same time, the scientific explanation would indicate that these neurotransmitter stimulations could definitely be a, a boost to his ability to come off of drugs. Because a lot of times drugs mimic these neurotransmitters. And so if you, if you are able to stimulate those with your natural process, then you're not going to need the drugs. And so, I mean, that's just a scientific explanation mm -hmm. about what could possibly have taken place in this in this one instance that I'm, I'm aware of. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that that's just on a scientific level. But then I really also believe that the music really helps us connect with our Heavenly Father. Um, because I... I am taking the music out of the Psalms, and so the, the Psalms are some of the most sublime uh, revelations of David, and, and the other. there's other authors of the Psalms as well. We have Asaph, and the sons of Korach, and Moses, and, and Solomon even, and so these, these Psalms that have been recorded for us are giving us these wonderful pictures of of what our Heavenly Father is doing on our behalf. and um, I have a, a thought. Um, we were talking about quantum physics earlier and the, area, the yeah. whole um, realm of quantum entanglement. So if God is light, Yeshua said, I am the light of the world. So that, that's light, that's that, that light frequency. And the entanglement is, um, yeah, God is everywhere. And so if you're connecting with music that was orchestrated by God himself, that, that was put in word form for us through the Hebrew language, all that entanglement, whoever listens to it is going to Benefit, be entangled yeah with the light source which is god so 
Um, there's an interesting, Steve did an um, interesting little bit of research when they had the Olympics in England, was that 2008, I think, and yeah. they, uh, he, what caught his attention was when they said that they had harmonically tuned a bell that was going to be rung at the at the opening of the Olympics, and he wanted to know what they tuned it to, what note, what yeah. frequency. If they specifically tuned it, then what note did they choose? <laughs> so he found a clip on YouTube that he, as soon as they started playing, he went right to the harp, and um, and went. Lo and behold, the note was E flat. <laughs> e flat, which um, I'm sorry, guitar players, I, I'm not trying to. <laughs> <laughs> but E flat is used for a lot of the a lot of the rock and roll and the the, the disharmonic music of the, world the is, disharmonic music, yeah. and so it troubles up the waters. It causes dis ease, mm -hmm. and when you when you tune into or plug into God's music, the brings you to brings you to ease the, so you have ease versus disease so yeah which one which one do you want and this man with the drug <laughs> issue he was tuning into the one that brought ease and brought him freedom from his bondage mm. mm hmm yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've I've read that everything is turned to tuned to 440. That we uh, all of our uh, you know TVs and so forth are 440. But that originally it was 444. But there was a but possibly possibly done in the 40s by Hitler on purpose to cause uh, you know. But either way, we know for a fact 440 isn't isn't going to cause harmony amongst us and yet we sit in front of the tvs we we tune in our radios all of this is tuned to 4 to 440. Yeah. yeah it and the you, you know these setting aside how it came about that it was changed um the one thing we we do know is that uh, one of the frequencies that we get out of numbers chapter 7 is 528 hertz which is a c note okay and that's god's sig that's uh yo -Vave. that's what we've been talking about, been talking huh? about the 528 which restructures water all all of that you know amazingly we find that in scripture <laughs> um and so in order to get 528 <clears throat> if we tune to 440 we um when we get to this that's the a note when we get to the c note it's only 523, which means it would be flat. And the, um, so in order to get to 528, we have to bring that A note up to 444 hertz. And then when we, if we use that as our standard and tune all the other notes to that, then the C note will be 528 hertz. And so for that reason, more than any other, I believe we should be tuning at 444 instead of 440, just because that gets us into the proper frequency for all of the other notes that we're going to be playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I've also read, um, again, I kind of went on my own healing journey um, last year. Mm -hmm. I, I my, you know, I go to a functional medicine doctor. Um, he, he believes he believes in Jesus and he would always tell me, you know, your body wants to heal yourself. I was diagnosed with uh, adrenal fatigue. That's what my blood work was saying. And and he would always tell me, you know, your body wants to heal yourself and so forth. Um, and, and he would really partner with me on whatever I was finding, you know, to, to do. Because cause I didn't take any medication. I literally just stopped working and allowed my body to rest and uh, fed it really good food. Um, and uh, and so anyway, he, he told me that, uh, or or I started looking into this that every organ has a frequency. Have you have you ever ever read that? Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, yeah it. Um, in fact, that really plays in with the um, tabernacle frequencies again because, and what Shirley was witnessing the um, I think it was just last night you were you found that some of the frequencies were helping your and others were not helping oh, and what, yeah. we, and what we found is I've got several naturopathic doctors that uh, hand my CD out to patients and um, have them listen to each one of the frequencies and see which one of them 
is helping them the most. And that's caused me to go into another project in which I'm doing a full CD on each one of the frequencies so that if somebody has one that's helping them more than another one, then they can have a whole oh, CD wow. that's just on that frequency, yeah. Mm. Mm, yeah, that's that's really interesting. Yeah, so I read about that. And then, have you ever have you ever um, read or done anything with binaural beats? Are you familiar yeah, with this? Okay. That, yeah. Yeah. Also interesting, isn't it? Because the the whole the whole purpose of uh, essentially what you do is you have to listen with headphones, but um, each headphone will play a different frequency. But when they're played together, it brings both parts of your brain into harmony. Um, right, yeah. Which, which is just so interesting to me. The, again, going back to what you were saying, it releases neurotransmitters. We know that for a fact. We know for a fact music does that. And we can see it scientifically bringing our, our brain waves into cohesion with each other simply by listening to music. Right, yeah. And, uh, the, mm -hmm. and the, the key with that, you know, I haven't really been do recording in that because obviously I can only do one frequency at a time. Um, <clears throat> but you have, but it takes the specific um, tuning of the frequencies that are going to give you the proper effects of that coordination within your brain. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's it's just really amazing all of the tools that we've been given, you know, here already on the planet, and we're you know in in our advanced states we think oh look at this amazing thing that we just discovered where where god had obviously already ingrained that into all of the levels of creation right everything here is to serve us everything here is unto life right for right. us yes, and to take life away yeah yeah, yeah. I, have a, I have kind of a theory about that too um you know it's interesting you know as we look around the world today we see lots of trouble, lots of chaos. Uh, we have a lot of toxins. We have uh, societal issues, all wars, rumors of wars, which uh, kind of makes you think about some things that we we know about that have been foretold. Anyway, if you think about, it, I like to go to. Well, first of all, I go to Psalm one thirty nine, where it's, it says God's telling us, telling through David, that while we were still in our mother's womb he was forming us he was knitting us together as the words that he uses and so that means that he has specific designs for each one of us purposes and talents and designs and and uh you know I, like jeremiah i know the plans i have for you plans for good and not evil hope and a future you know so we have this specific design that he's given each one of us well, the enemy is trying to take us away from that design. He's trying to take that design out of us because he doesn't want us to be effective. He wants us to to be crippled, as it were, to yeah. be in, in disease instead of ease. And uh, so then on top of that, you go to the book of Esther and Mordecai, at one point, he says, who knows whether you come to the kingdom for such a time as this? And so you know, each one of us have come to the kingdom right here, right now, for such a time as this. And I think our Heavenly Father is smart enough, you know, it's like a friend of mine has always said, he's smarter than we are. Um, he, he's known the times that we are in, and he knows what, it, what we need in order to be able to tune back up. In fact, the heart behind me. If I, if I let it sit a couple of days, I have to go back and tune it because it's gotten slightly out of tune and it doesn't sound right. And our Heavenly Father, I believe, is giving us this knowledge of these frequencies, these proper frequencies, because He knows that we need, we've, we've gotten out of tune and well, it's time for us to get tuned back again. Well, we each have a witness and a testimony. Right. And, and if we don't get what Steve just said, retuned, to be in ease, then our witness and our testimony will not be for our Father in Heaven's glory. If, if we're not in good health, then we're not a very good witness. <laughs> you know, well, good health physically yeah. as well as mentally yeah. and emotionally. Yeah. You know, if we're running around with a donkey face all sad and, oh, and I've got all these pains and all, you know, 
then people go like, well, I don't want what you have. <laughs> so, yeah. But our Heavenly Father is giving us this wisdom and understanding you know, through functional medicine doctors who give God credit um, through these frequencies, so all of these different things that are being made available to us so that we can have, Yeshua said, I came that you may have life, that you may have it more abundantly. So, I mean, that's what, that's our Heavenly Father's plans for us, plans for good and not evil, hope in a future. That's what that's what the plan is. And, like, and I, just to add to that, yeah. I don't think Steve is saying that if you have pains or, or some type no. of medical issue that you're out of God's eyesight out of his favor something is getting our attention <laughs> yes and it's your attitude that you respond with it's like i want to give you glory god no matter what happens to me and that really is the story of job yeah. he got to the point in his life where he said though you slay me lord i'm i'm not going to deny you i'm not going to betray you i'm going to continue to trust in you and even though his physical body was tormented he came to that place of peace emotionally mentally spiritually to know that that whatever happened to him god was doing it as a perfection of his character god had not left him He's, the Bible says, I will never leave you or forsake you. I, I have you in my eyesight. You are precious to me. And we have to remember that. So whatever comes against us in doubts and resentments and angers and bitternesses and whatever it might be, that that we have to shut the door on those. Like, like Jesus, Yeshua said, he said, get behind me, Satan. You know that what you're saying is not from God and one good way to think about that is where um, the Apostle John recorded in John 10 10 he said the devil only comes to steal kill and destroy and I have come to give you life and give you life abundantly so you look at your life and go well is that something trying to be stolen from me or or to kill something or to destroy something and that's a pretty good indicator that it doesn't come from the father so um we want to live an abundant life yeah. you know what with our eyes that old song turn your eyes upon yeshua look full in his wonderful face and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace and through the things that are happening in our world today the word that keeps coming to my mind is keep your eyes on me yeshua is saying keep your eyes on me walk in the light be where in Psalm 119 it says brings us back to light. <laughs> I am I am the lamp unto your feet, the light unto your path. Stay in the light. Walk the narrow road. Go through the narrow gate. You'll have life. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so good. You know, Dr. Ben, uh, one of the first things that drew me into following his accounts before I ever reached out to him to to come onto my channel, I heard him say. Um, that he doesn't believe that there's any kind of thing such as disease. He believes that there's only consequences, right? right. And so yeah. when I think about the, the way that everything was created, it was created intentionally, and it was all created to continue to, to reproduce after its kind. You know, right. every single thing will do that. And so when we understand there's already been principles, there's already been laws laid down for us in ways that will live that, that we can live, we can choose to, we can choose not to because we all have free will. But when we choose to partner with that, it will have a certain outcome. And when we yeah. choose to go against it, it will also have a certain outcome. And so when you when I started thinking about this, it was like, oh yeah, so much of so for I'll just use myself as a, as an example is that when I when I look back on it, all the things that I was doing were like uh, feeling good to my, my, I felt good emotionally, felt good in my mind, you know, felt good spiritually. My body was like, stop it. <laughs> you know, it was yeah. telling me that is not okay. You do not, uh, you're not, you're not made that way. And, and so that's what it, it is important to understand how how um, impactful our physical health is for the rest of our life, right? For every single other area of my life is going to be impacted by my physical life, but by, by my physical health. We had a 
interesting um, example of that this morning before our call with you we do a weekly Bible study with uh, a group in India that we were so honored and privileged to go visit last year and today's was um, had I'll just do part of it the tree of the knowledge of good and evil versus the tree of life and how the tree of life is is what Yeshua said I've come to give you life and give you life abundantly but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil something can look good but the consequences of it not be good for you and when when we were visiting churches and walking around the village where we were out in India a lot of people were asking prayer for um, diabetes they had diabetes and they wanted prayer for it and I said well you know one of the first things that you can do is to stop eating sugar and reduce it dramatically <laughs> and how sugar tastes because they use a lot over there <laughs> well sugar they equate with happiness yeah. lots of sugar means